How's it going guys? In today's video, we're going to be learning about an encryption method called ROT13, which essentially just means we're going to rotate the alphabet by 13 places, hence the name ROT13. Or maybe you can even say ROT13 for rotate 13 places. Anyway, our script is going to look like this. It's going to prompt the user to enter some sort of message that they want to encrypt, such as this is a message. Of course, I'm creative as always. And as soon as we enter that, it's going to encrypt it using the ROT13 encryption. And obviously we want to make sure that we actually encrypted it correctly. So we also will create a way to decrypt it. And that's why you see the decrypted message immediately under the encrypted message. Anyway, I'm going to be showing you two ways you can create it. The first way is going to be using vanilla Python, or actually both of these ways are going to be using vanilla Python, but the first one is more of a manual implementation. Then I'll show you the one that only takes maybe two lines of code. So first of all, let's import string because we're going to have to use these symbols and characters from there. Next, we need to create a translator and I'm going to call this rot13 translator. And that's going to return to us a dictionary. Now, first we want to get all of the lowercase characters and that's going to be of type string. And to save time, we're going to type in string dot ashi lowercase. And that's going to give us the lowercase alphabet, which consists of 26 letters. And we're going to do the same thing for uppercase. So uppercase, ashi, uppercase. Then we're going to create a variable called shift of type integer, which is going to be the amount of places we want to shift this alphabet. And with that, we can also create our shift. So first we need to shift the lowercase symbols, which is going to be of type string. That's going to equal lowercase at the index of the shift onwards plus lowercase at the index of everything up until that shift. And we can actually print this out real quick so I can show you exactly what we did there. And right now it doesn't return a dictionary obviously, but if we were to run this rot13 translator, and I'm going to insert that into if name is equal to main, you will see that we're going to get this alphabet back. And when you see this, the first thing that should come to your mind is ROT13 because it starts with NOP and ends with KLM, which means we rotated everything 13 places. So A actually starts 13 places in. Anyway, we did that for the lowercase and we also need to do that for the uppercase. So we will duplicate that and say shift underscore uppercase. And of course we need to change this to uppercase and this one also to uppercase. And immediately below this, we're going to create a translator. And that's going to be of type dictionary, which is going to take the string. And with this, we're going to use the make translation method. So make trans, and first that will take the lowercase plus the uppercase. And we want to map that to the shift lowercase plus the shift uppercase. And at the end, we're going to return this translator. And it was as simple as that. So now every time we insert a letter or a group of letters, it's going to map each one of those to the shifted version. Next, we're going to create a function called rot13, which actually performs the operation. So that's going to take a message of type string and it will return to us a string. Then we're going to create a table of type dictionary, which is going to equal our rot13 translator, since that will give us back a dictionary, which we will use as the table. And we want to return the message dot translate and inside here we need to pass in the table and that will cipher and decipher this message. And I probably should have mentioned this earlier, but rot13 is perfect for the English alphabet or any language that uses the standard 26 letter alphabet because 13 is the perfect midpoint for that, which means we do not need to create an additional method to decipher our message. It's going to rotate it 13 places, which means we can use the exact same method to decipher what we just ciphered. So if you want to create this for your own native language, you're going to have to get a bit more creative and do a quick Google search on how you can decipher the message that we're about to cipher. Anyway, now let's create our main function. And inside here, we're going to create some user input so they can insert whatever they want. And that's going to take the input that says your message. Then first of all, we're going to have an encrypted message. So encrypted, I can never spell that message of type string. And that's going to equal the rot13 with our user input. And once we execute this function, 
we can print the encrypted message. And just to make sure that decrypting it also works, we're going to create something called decrypted message of type string, which will equal rot13 once again with the encrypted message inside. Then we can print the decrypted message just like that. And that was the manual implementation of rot13. If we want to test it out, we can just type in main and run our script. Now we can type in anything we want, such as hello world, and it's going to encrypt it and then decrypt it. Now let's look at the alternative that saves us from writing this entire mess. So I'm going to remove all of that and everything inside here. And instead we're going to import codex. And I actually learned this approach from a user in the community section on this channel. So thanks to that user. But what we're going to do here is import codex. And then we're going to create a variable called encoded, which should be of type string. And now we can type in codex dot encode. And we want to encode the user input with the rot13 encoding. And then we can print encoded. Now we can run the exact same script and we can say the exact same thing. And it's going to encode it using the rot13 encryption. So codex is pretty powerful. I might actually do a video on that. I'm going to look more into it because it's absolutely brilliant that we can save so many lines of code using a simple module. But it was still nice to understand how rot13 actually worked under the hood. And to decode, we can do something quite similar. We can say that's equal to codex dot decode. And we're going to pass in encoded with the rot13 encoding. Then we can print the decoded. And once again, we can say goodbye. And it's going to encrypt it and then decrypt it just like that. Anyway, that just about covers everything I wanted to talk about in this video. Do let me know in the comment section down below if you would like to learn more about encryption. I would love to make a few videos on it. But with all that being said, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.